first of all, thank you very much for the Copernicus Festival, for having me and for organizing all this. Uh, second, for the ones, for the people who doesn't, who don't know me, my name is Albert. I have a PhD in cognitive science, but I'm also an artist. And what I will try to do now, during 10 minutes, 15, because we are running late, uh, so I'm going to run very fast. I'm going to try to explain you in a nutshell this project, my artificial muse, that I hope that you're going to stay half an hour more and you're going to uh, see you're going to stay here for the show, for the performance. Uh, so let me try to, to explain you in a nutshell what's, what's this project about. Um, as a headline, I could tell you that this was the first mural painting, the, the first fresco painting, completely designed by, by an artificial neural network, uh, and that it was created during a three-day performance at Sonar, at Festival Sonar in Barcelona last summer. And this is a, is a joint project, it's a collaboration with Mario Klingemann. This is one of, he's one of the best artists that, that works with, with code. And also with Mark Marzenit, which is a music producer. And I would like to think, or, or at least this is, it seems that is how people perceive this project, is that it seems that it's really disruptive. Uh, because it tries to put everything a bit upside down. This is a, a scientific and artistic project, and the aim is not this one. Some, some time ago, I was asked to, to, per, to, to create a performance uh, to recreate a creative battle between a man and a machine to see who, uh, who was more creative, if this machine, if this robot, or myself as a human. But after that, it was really interesting, I have to admit. But after that, I realized that this duality doesn't make any sense. So this project, my artificial muse, tries to explore which kind of relationship you can establish with a robot, with a machine, with an, with an algorithm. Uh, and it can be like this, or it can be multiplicative, or it could be like this. Uh, so the aim in the end is to explore how a human can collaborate with an artificial intelligence during artistic and creative processes. That's, in a nutshell, that's the aim of the project. And as I told you before, we wanted to put upside down lots of things. And we wanted to start with this old fashioned, this classic concept of a muse, uh, an inspirational muse. Uh, because if you, what, if you start asking questions, what is a muse? Who can be a muse? Where can we find a muse? Uh, and we wanted to ask a really critical one. And it's the following. Can a muse ever be artificial? Do they need to be physical? Do I need to touch a, a muse or, or it can be really artificial? Because it, if you try to simplify at the, maxu, at the maximum level, visually speaking, this idea of a muse, you end up with a body, a human body. And if you try to simplify that, visually speaking, you end up with what we call a stickman. And just with a couple of traces, you can design a, a human body in a specific posture, gesture, or position. And this is exactly the only input that we are giving to the artificial neural network that we developed, to this, this robot, this algorithm. And from this, the neural net is offering us, or is trying to offer us, a real artwork, or, or like an image that we as humans could consider truly uh, an artwork, uh, an, an art piece. Uh, for instance, an example, if I show you this artificial muse, this stigma, does it remind you of any really famous painting? Really, really famous painting? Yes? Shoot. Yes, exactly. La Maja Desnuda from, from Goya. What about this one? Maybe this one is a bit more difficult. Anyone? Yeah? Okay. Are you, are you like, like uh... <laughs> okay? okay. <laughs> yes, this is from Manet. Uh, and I guess this, this, this should be really ringing a bell to most of you. 
This is the creation from, of, of Adam from Michelangelo. So you get the idea, right? Uh, and just the last one, this is one of my favorite ones. This is Ophelia from John Everett. And, and this is exactly the input that we were giving to, the, to this neural net, to this artificial neural network. Uh, and and for only from this, as an input, it tries to create, to understand what's a body, and then to create like an artwork from that. And I'm going to run super fast, but I'm going to explain you how this algorithm works in just four different steps. The first one, it's what we call a random pose generator, meaning that the machine does this stuff, these things that you see. Really different stigmas in specific postures and, and positions. Second step, one of my favorite ones, you will see why. We call it protobody, and it's the first time that the algorithm is kind of computationally speaking, obviously, is understanding this idea, this concept of a body, and is offering us some images from the way that he, she, it understands what, what a naked body looks like. And it shows us something like this. And I think this is, well, when we saw this for the very first time, we were, com we were completely amazed and puzzled. Um, you have to understand that this is 100% artificial. These images don't exist in, in nature, physically speaking. And the machine came up with this. Uh, so then we wanted a third step in this creative process of the machine. Like, okay, it seems that you more or less understand this idea of a body, this concept. Now let's try to be a bit more creative. We call it style transfer. So start playing with colors, with textures, and with the, with the context, and let's see what you come up with. And it's giving us something like this. And finally, this was one of the trickiest parts uh, when, when coding all this, all this machine, and we call it transhancement, because this, um, the machine was giving us lots, as you can imagine, lots and lots of images, but the resolution was quite low. So the image was, was small, in a sense. And as we wanted to create like a visual show, uh, you cannot just stretch the image because you, you then get pixels in, in just a couple of seconds. Uh, so computationally speaking, this is a really tricky and difficult part because it means that if you want um, a picture Double, doubling this size, it means that you have to create a new pixel, and this new pixel is new information that has, it needs to have an aesthetic um, accordance, an aesthetic coherence with the rest of the image. So this, computationally speaking, in terms of art, it's, it's terribly difficult. This is like, like, as an example of stretching the image and then uh, and, and it was really funny when we were developing this, this machine. Uh, and this is what we call the human machine inter um, curation process. Because I, I had to establish kind of a dialogue between the machine and myself and to direct a little bit where do we wanted to, to get. And it was really funny because I had um, like an app in my smartphone and it was like a Tinder app. So the machine was showing me artificial muses and I was swiping left, right, left, right. I like this one, I don't like this one. It was really funny. Um, this was the first artificial muse that the machine created. Uh, and this was the one that I used to paint during those three days at Sonar Festival last year. And I don't know if you are fully aware of this, but. Uh, th seriously, this is amazing, computationally speaking, because we as humans, we haven't done anything, nor Mario, Mark, or myself, the two other artists of the project. This is completely made by the machine, and as you can imagine, for this, for this one, we used that Ophelia stickman, the one that was lying down on the floor. Uh, I'm going to quickly jump to the discussions. After this first part, of the project where we gather lots of experiences, uh, etc. It came to my mind that there are three different ideas that I would like to share with you. The first one is that we are realizing 
uh, that we already have a history of digital artistic movement style. By, th by this I mean, if you go to, to a museum, normally you have a room where you can see, I don't know, paintings from the surrealist movement. If you go to another room, you can see paintings from uh, the Renaissance, etc., etc. And now we are starting to realize that all this artwork made by data and machines, it's starting to already have or creating some digital artistic movement and styles. Let me show you a couple of examples. If you show me this kind of image, this is what it's called from the deep dream um, algorithms. Uh, this is, I can totally tell you that this is from 2015. And there was like a whole bunch of, of artwork designing using these kind of aesthetics. If, I, if you show me this, these kind of styles, I'm going to tell you, oh, this is definitely what it's called style transfer, and this is definitely from 2016. And it seems like an, another digital artistic movement without the, the or with the beauty that it's not, not only man-made, or, or the machine takes like a huge part on it. And if you show me something like this, I'm going to tell you, oh, this is definitely from this last year. Uh, this is from, from a process that we call peaks to peaks, and it also has these specific textures, and you can really um, see it really fast that it comes from, from this movement. And, and from an art history perspective, this is something quite big to realize that there are already movements that are not made by humans. So the second thing I wanted to share with you is that, well, I think little by little, all of us, we are starting to realize that we are developing new aesthetical sensibilities from this artwork that are only made from data. Um, I get the same, in, in, to put it in, in uh, using an example, I can have the same emotional reaction looking at a... Uh, an oil painting that I see in a museum and uh, that I know the artist or that I've been reading about that artist. Uh, but now I'm realizing that I'm also having the same kind of emotional reactions when I'm seeing um, artworks that are completely made from, from data or that are completely digital. And finally, okay, there should, okay is that I'm realizing when trying to replicate all these digital artworks and I'm trying to translate them in a physical format using a really classical method such as oil painting, I'm realizing that, are, that there are lots of artistic artifacts that are only present in the computational world. Meaning that when I see those images, it's really hard, really difficult for me to replicate, it, to replicate them um, on a canvas, using a, a paintbrush and using paint. And maybe this sounds obvious, but when it was the first time that I, ha I, was, I had to paint this, one of these artificial muses, it was quite shocking to me, because I've been painting all my life, and all of a sudden there are some textures that it seems that I'm not capable of, of translating, it, in, translating them in, into the real world. Um, I think now, just, just to finish, I would like to show you the teaser for the, a, a little short video for the performance that we are about to see. Uh, let's hope and fingers crossed that this works. Can we try, please? Thank you.